The River Severn is the UK's longest river at 354 kilometres. It starts up in Plinlimon in the Welsh hills, just 15 miles from the Welsh coast. From there, it flows through four counties and several cities and towns before reaching the Severn estuary and emptying into the Bristol Channel and eventually the Atlantic Ocean. But it starts here. It's hard to believe that the UK's longest river can begin with a single post and a trickle of water up on a moor in the Welsh hills. Rivers are incredibly important ecosystems, home to some amazing wildlife. They also connect all of us to the ocean, acting like arteries and veins running through our country. No matter how far inland we live, we're never too far from a river which directly connects us to the sea. However, this also means that our litter, if not properly disposed of, can end up in the rivers flowing directly out to sea where it's incredibly difficult to then clean it up and it can cause enormous harm to wildlife out in the ocean. But my journey on the river starts here on the Welsh-English border on my stand-up paddleboard. I'll be paddling over the next five or six days out to sea, checking out the journey that plastic makes from inland to the coast. It was dark by the time I got off the river last night, so I didn't have a chance to sort through the rubbish that I picked up. Um, I'm going to weigh it this morning and see how much we collected. About three kilos, and that was just in a couple of hours of paddling really. And most of what I found here is plastic sheeting that was caught up in the branches of the trees lining the river. Um, one or two plastic bottles and a frisbee. I've just arrived in Shrewsbury. This morning I paddled 15 kilometres to get here and I saw seven kingfishers, I saw buzzards, herons, ducks. It was a really peaceful and very untouched environment. And it feels like a stark contrast compared to the bustling city of Shrewsbury where so far I've not seen quite as much wildlife. It's still a very beautiful river, but we'll soon find out what the plastic situation is here. kilometres today, been on the water for seven and a half hours, starting to feel it now, um, about ready to finish for the day, my back's starting to hurt now. Um, it's been quite an interesting day, a lot of contrast, so before Shrewsbury was very remote, very beautiful, very um, full of wildlife and nature, and then since Shrewsbury it's still been absolutely gorgeous, but a lot of the nature seems to have been replaced by plastic. It was very noticeable how much more plastic there was after the city than before, and that stuff that's been washed downstream from human activity in that city. plastic items I found on the river yesterday were single-use items like plastic bottles and food containers. Now there's lots we can do as individuals to avoid these. For example, my lunch and my snacks, I've packaged them in reusable containers, there's no need for single-use plastic here and I always take a reusable water bottle with me whenever I go out of the house. Um, I think there's a lot of onus at the moment on individuals to make changes around their plastic consumption and this is really important, it is going to make a difference, but also the pressure has to be on the manufacturer of plastic and the more people who are making their choices to use less plastic and saying we don't need this in our lives the more pressure there is on manufacturers to make it easier for us to do so and, and to create products that don't require single-use plastic.
This morning I paddled from Cressage to Bridge North and I've been joined by a group of local paddlers who are absolute legends and I'm excited to have a chat with them today about what paddling and what the River Severn means to them. So Craig, how has this morning been for you out on the water? Oh, it's been excellent. You know, it's, uh, it's one of the longest paddles I've done on the river, but already from you coming and showing what you're doing on Instagram, you know, I put a bucket on the front of my board today and we're just talking about the club now, introducing the members to doing some regular litter picks along the river, you know, and get that it's probably a week or you know, a monthly thing that we'll do with the club members and get them into picking the litter along the river. That's fantastic, because we were having a chat before, Dave, weren't we, about how getting people out onto the reservoir on paddle boards, perhaps people who haven't even known that there's a reservoir there, has introduced them just to a way to get out on the water and a, and a way to feel passionately about protecting it. Yeah, the, um, it's been a fantastic journey for us really. We were a sailing club and a declining membership and we thought, what can we do? So we introduced paddle boarding and it's, it's just opened the reservoir. We've had 350 people come and do walk on water classes People who'd never dream of being on paddle boards or on the water. I just love the fact that it connects people with nature, with the grounding. You know, it's, it's something really important for people. Okay. And we were having a chat earlier as well, weren't we, about how important being on the water is for mental health. And I think, you know, both of us, we've had our own mental health journey and actually being able to spend time on the water has been pivotal, certainly for me, and, and I know you have um, explained before. Would you mind explaining just right. how important this, this place is for your well-being? So, yeah, I've battled mental health issues for quite a few years, and for me, the river is just such a special place, it's headspace, it's, it's being just at one with the nature, you're, you're mindful with what you're doing, and it just clears everything away, it's soul food, and Having that enjoyment and that love of what it's doing to me makes you more passionate about wanting to protect it. It's such a special place. And it, it could do so much good for people who've got mental health issues. The connection between water and good mental health is just amazing. And even I think for those who don't have mental illnesses, just to kind of keep your mental health nature battery topped up, it's a really, a really special place, isn't it? taking this journey is to follow the course of the river on my stand-up paddleboard from its source all the way out to sea and that's the same journey that plastic makes as well. So I mean I'm finding things that we're all used to seeing in our everyday lives, bottled coke, milk bottle, another drinks bottle, it's even a baby's bottle here and if not collected all of that stuff is on its way straight out into the ocean. There was an amazing study done a few years ago which stated that if every person who visited a canal or river in the UK picked up just one piece of plastic, that in a year those environments would be free from litter. How amazing is that? So if you do go down to a river or a canal, please try and pick up just a couple of bits of litter because once they're out of these waterways, they're in the ocean where they're often lost forever.
very last section on the river and this section is tidal which means that the ocean basically comes up and down the river a couple of times every day and having that flow back on the river feels very special because there were a couple of days where that flow was stopped by the locks that have been built to allow boats to pass up and down the river. There were big walls along the side of the river and it felt very much like we tried to tame the river. Um, I need blue space, I, I need time on the water and by the water for my mental health. It's the most potent potion to make me feel good and, and keep me well. And I did find that those couple of days where the river had stopped flowing and where it had been urbanised and um, tamed, it felt really um, very, very different to the sections where the river had lots of flow and lots of wildlife and energy and was a bit more wild. So it's very, very special to be back on this wild section of the river. Um, and I think that's something that we can take away from this, um, not just from my experience, but other people I've spoken to who've said that those wild sections of river are so, so vital for maintaining their mental health and um, keeping them well. So an exciting day ahead and nearly, nearly done. to Cal Major. Travelling the length of the River Severn, well most of it, uh, doing it to raise awareness for the amount of plastic ending up in the rivers. So let's uh, speak to her now. Morning Cal! I'm currently kneeling on my board because on the back of my board I've pulled out a freezer from the water. So I've got a freezer balancing on the back of my board. Oh what? Oh, yeah, what? One, you know, a, a freezer, you know the little ones that send me to pop in the kitchen? It's that kind of size. So that's it, I've officially finished paddling the River Severn. I'm at Sharp Ness now where the water is really tidal. Today in the water I found a freezer which I managed to get onto my board and bring down to Sharp Ness where I was met by some really, really lovely guys from Sara who pulled it out of the water for me and they're going to help me dispose of it. I've also found lots of single use plastic bottles, bags, again the same stuff that I've been finding the whole time. But I feel really grateful to have seen these, this journey that plastic makes and to see all the different types of stuff that we can find in the river here and use that to help communicate better ways to live with, with and without plastic. So I'm just weighing, just weighing the litter I found today on the river and I reckon I've got another three or four kilos in there. Yeah, four kilos today plus a 20 kilo freezer. So I reckon that brings the running total up to probably around 80 kilos of litter in one week by one person. That's more than I weigh. This afternoon I'm heading over to a nursery in Bristol where the children have been following this journey and apparently they've made their own sea creatures from plastic. And it's, it's so great to see the younger generation so engaged and so passionate about protecting wildlife. But this journey has shown us that we all need to do something to help to tackle this problem. It can't just be down to the younger generation. It's a massive issue, it's still affecting us, it's not gone away, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. We all need to step up and do what we can to help protect our natural world. My name's Autumn and I'm three years old. I love to see in the rivers. Why do you love to see in the rivers? Um, because um, they've got turtles and, and they've got a seagull. And they've got a seagull. I made jellyfish. Can you show us your jellyfish? What colours have you got on your jellyfish? And can you tell me about plastic bottles? Um, plastic bottles are, are plastic and, and fish can't eat them. So what should we do with plastic bottles? Um, um, I'm afraid I'm in a bin. 